Libero Copper and Gold is up nearly 50% year-to-date, helped by a big hit at its Makoa property in Columbia this April. Libero is ticker LBC on the Venture Exchange. President and CEO is Ian Harris. Ian, welcome to Kitco. Thank you very much. It's very exciting to be here. I want to get to those drill results in just a minute, but could you thumbnail Libero for us, Ian? Yeah, so really uh, the, 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 the current Libero story started at the very beginning of 2001, where we recognized this real potential split between supply and demand coming up on, on copper, uh, and then a really poor valuations throughout, throughout market to, to acquire some incredible assets. Um, I'm a mining engineer by background with 25 years, and uh, so we know you know 90% of the world's copper comes from open pit copper porphyry. So those are the type of projects we're looking for, which is is more than just copper porphyry, but obviously near its surface, disseminated size and scale is also critical. So we put together a beautiful portfolio, I believe, of uh, three significant process uh, assets within the Americas, which we also think is strategic because we do believe that that copper is a strategic metal will become a a seriously strategic metal into the near future, uh, and in very solid jurisdictions within Colombia, uh, within Colombia, uh, San Juan, Argentina, which are the highest ranked jurisdictions uh, in South America, and also in British Columbia, Canada. So, I think we've really got a, a, a nice set of portfolios, and we've been applying a strategy uh, to how to advance them properly and put the the groundwork in solid bases. And now, I think we're really coming into uh, those significant catalysts of creating value for our shareholders. Let's focus on Colombia. What was significant about those drill results from Macoa Inn? I think the most important takeaway is that uh, it's a project that was last drilled by B2 Gold in 2012. We did a resource estimate when we first acquired the project in 2018. Uh, and it's over 600 million tons, over 4 billion pounds of copper. It's over 500 million pounds of molly. World molly production is 600 million pounds. It was already a significant uh, project in terms of size and scale and potential. It's still in its infancy, um, but it wasn't really recognized. So, you know, what we're really telling market with this, and you know, obviously there's spectacular holes that if other companies uh, had drilled, you know, it would have been a company maker type discovery. Um, but it really is bringing a significant amount of attention that people are recognizing. Whoa, this Macoa project is is significant. Uh, we look at Solaris, Solaris's Warinsa that just put out their 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 the report recently. Uh, the grades within are the same cutoffs are almost identical. It's just size is probably about a 30 to 40 percent, but our project obviously has significant legs of growing and expanding that that existing resource. And we also have additional targets within our property. This Jurassic Porphyry Belt is famous for this clustering. Um, so I think all it's really just been an eye opener for so many people. Something we've known, but um, we knew that it took drill results to get the attention on the project. You did some uh, nice framing and some comparisons within the news release, uh, talking about how that hole and how that um, well, how that project ranks, Ian. Yeah. So um, you know, in terms, I mean, when we have such a demand and need for copper coming up in the future, you need large scale projects, right? So one of the main key identifiers, or the way to it, whether it's early stage or later stage. Um, to say how much copper is actually in this. So what is the potential, the size and scale is is kind of measured by uh, percent meters. So how long of an intersection, a continuous intersection of copper. So uh, we're only into 450 out of the you know the first 1,200 meters of this hole, but we knew we needed to go deep to show uh, or to prove to ourselves the size and scale potential of the project, prove it to, to the world and also drive the geology uh, that says, okay, outside of the resource area, where else should we be looking to continue expansion? So we were checking a lot of boxes on this hole, making sure market understood that this is a, it's a big project. It's only in the beginning. We might be just looking at the, the foot of an elephant. Uh, we're getting the geological information. We've actually have an incredible team built around the company. I wish I had time just to talk about, you know, the experience behind myself personally at Mirador or Colbury Panama or Antamina or Mount Milligan, multiple projects have been taken from discovery all the way into production. And we have that perspective when we're, we're driving our projects forward. But it's been a very exciting time to kind of bring to market. And, and again, we're, we've only done the first 450 meters to say, guys, this is a project everybody should be putting their attention on. Uh, these comp- you know, uh, these projects are just going to be driven by the teams that they have. Uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about yourself and the team. 
So I, as I, I am a mining engineer, uh, you know, the, the closeness to the Macoa project for me is I was previously senior vice president and country manager for Corriente Resources and, and took the project Mirador post-discovery uh, through feasibility sale. I was on board one year after the sale, uh, t- took that project into the start of construction, and it went on to be the first large-scale mining operation in the history of Ecuador. It's in the exact same Jurassic Porphyry belt um, you know, geology doesn't respect boundaries and it's right, you know, through, uh, through Ecuador ends up into Putumayo, uh, Colombia, where we're at. Um, but this Jurassic Porphyry belt has been putting out some significant, uh, large scale projects. You had Mirador, Mirador Norte, Finanza, San Carlos, and today we're in with Solaris. Uh, so we, uh, we have a, a big expectation. And it's another reason we picked up and put in a title request for an additional, um, 1,000 square kilometers that, you know, all the open ground on that exists on the on the Jurassic Belt. Um, we have a great starting point, but we also know that there's significant legs of, of doing some significant regional geology in the area and reproducing that that fingerprint in, in, in the area. Talk about uh, government and community support, Ian. So again, one of the, the the lessons learned, I remember I tell a lot of people, I went down to Ecuador as a mining engineer and I left as a politician and sociologist because uh, those are the critical components many times of moving these types of projects forward. And, and we, we wanted to do it right, the right way in Colombia, which meant it's creating significant real ties and real positive impacts locally, um, not, not fabricated. Uh, so little things, I mean, it might not sound like much, but even before we ever drilled our first uh, drill hole, uh, you know, we made our, our, our safety boots, our seal hole toed boots locally. We built our uniforms there. We went to the farms to make sure that we had the this, this supplies. Uh, we talked to 5,000 people before we even drilled, our, before we did our geophysics, we had, we, we discussed what we we're going to do ahead of time, listening. Uh, 95% of the workforce is local, including the, uh, the professionals, um, which we understood, and, and there was capacity building, et cetera. And that's why really 2021, so much time was spent before even drilling that first hole, because it's really that context and that, that, uh, that social license locally. And if it's really built strongly and real, right, it's the one that will, over multiple period of time, will create significant uh, political will. Uh, for your project. Uh, Colombia today has it. You have a president who said, I want to be the third largest producer of copper in South America. We're the largest resource in, 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 in Colombia. So we understand the responsibility we're taking. Their biggest uh, exportations is, is oil and coal. And they know with the dark decarbonization of the world's economies uh, that there needs a transition needs to be made. But in order to sustain that uh, long-term, uh, the real critical component is really having a real relationship uh, locally. So that is a key component into the way we work. Now you raised some money in January, so you're funded? Yeah, we raised $8.3 million in, in January, and that is really earmarked 100% to cover the entire expiration budget for MACOA this year and obviously corporate overhead. Um, we're hoping uh, that, that this coming uh, work in, in MACOA will help support any additional financings we need to do on some of the additional projects. We're still working on uh, getting a uh, drilling license in in. In Argentina, which for us will be probably potentially a white swan event, um, but there's a lot going on, but I think everything is moving in the right direction. We're well funded. We have an amazing team on the ground and in, you know, with our directors and board. Uh, we're well financed. We're in the right commodity. We have great assets, incredible geology. I think we really have, we put everything together on this one. It's a great time to be in copper, isn't it, Ian? It is. I mean, I'm a mining engineer. I've been working 25 years and it, it, it didn't register with me. When you see conservatively uh, 4 million tons of copper is needed by 2030, well, some say 8 million tons of copper is needed by 2030. The 10 largest mines in the world produce 6 million tons. So we have eight years to replace the 10 largest mines in the world. We've got a lot of work to do. Uh, we have some significant work. We understand this, is, you know, we have a long-term vision. When the world really starts realizing the serious issues that we have, uh, we wanna make sure our projects are advanced, not just from a resource standpoint, but we're adding the engineering, the environmental, the social, the political, all the components. We want our projects to be the most advanced possible and almost take it on as a responsibility to the planet. Now. Talk about the toe of the elephant uh, that you have there. Uh, what are the milestones? What are you going to be drilling out over the next 12 months, Ian? 
Uh, we actually have currently one drill that we'll never, you know, we'll just continuously drill, and we're looking at when we add additional drills throughout the throughout the year. Uh, we currently have 12,500 meters planned, uh, and then that number just on a monthly basis will continually to increase. We have plenty of work to do on the existing resource. We have significant step outs because it's all open in all directions. We've identified new targets because we're seeing the evidence of potentially additional porphyry centers. Uh, within near the property area. So we expect a lot of work to be going and to see significant catalysts uh, as we continue to, to add resources or potentially add resources to this asset um, and also continue to de-risk it. Ian, thanks for speaking with Kitco. Oh, great to be here. Great to be here. He's Ian Harris. He's president and CEO of Libero Copper and Gold. My name is Michael McRae and you're watching Kitco Mining. <laughs>